Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. A processional hymn is Joy to the World, number 30 in your hymnals. <laughs> Second Sunday in Advent, we, we light the Bethlehem or love candle, and as we light the second Advent candle, we are reminded that Jesus is the star of Jacob. I see him, but now behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, from Numbers 24, 17. The order for the administration of the Lord's Supper continues on page 85 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy on us, and upon our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, <coughs> unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Lord, have mercy us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and our hearts to keep his law. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. 
Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord have mercy upon us, and thine hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. The Lord have mercy upon us, and thine hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. The Lord have mercy upon us, and thine hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. The Lord have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy. God, vouchsafe we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them that by patience and comfort of thy holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life which thou hast given us in our savior jesus christ amen, amen. almighty god give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which thy son jesus christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, now and ever. Amen. Please be seated. morning is Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew thee not shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, 
and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I said. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Psalter appointed for this morning, Psalm 119, verses 1 through 16, which are found on page 421 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us read responsibly by half verse. <coughs> Blessed are those that are undefiled in the way, and, and walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and, and seek him with their whole heart, even they who do no wickedness, and walk in his ways. Thou hast charged that we shall diligently keep thy commandments. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep thy statutes. So shall I not be confounded while I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will thank thee with an unfeigned heart when I shall have learned the judgments of thy righteousness. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Even by ruling himself after thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not go wrong out of thy commandments. Thy word have I hid within my heart. That I should not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. O oh, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I been telling of all the judgments of thy mouth. I have had as great delight in the way of thy testimonies as in all manner of riches. I will talk of thy commandments and have respect unto thy ways. My delight shall be in thy statutes. And I will not forget thy word. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, and that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Jesus Christ, that ye may with one mind and with one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to, conf to conform the promises made unto the fathers, 
and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope the power of our Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus Christ according to St. Luke chapter 21 beginning at verse 25. Glory, Glory be to thee, thee, O Lord. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things began to come to pass, they then looked up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when you see these things come to pass, Know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Now let us confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 89 of the Book of Common Prayer. Confessing together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father and before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things remain, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified is saved by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Well, 
welcome you to our worship this Lord's Day. Please take note of the announcements following uh, our worship this morning. We will have a vestry meeting um, on December 18th. We will have our annual Christmas luncheon. Uh, it's soup and salad. Betty, is there a sign-up sheet? I, I went through my computer <laughs> and I found one from last year and I, all I had to do was change the date. So it's and there's also the uh, sign-up sheet for the Christmas family that we are giving to with the gifts that are listed. As noted, there is a special offering through the season of Advent for the Reformed Episcopal Church Board of Foreign Missions. Make your checks out to St. Peter's, but designated either for a Lenten offering or the Board of Foreign Missions, and the treasurer will send it to the board at the end of the season of Advent. And as noted also, the vestry has des established a designated building fund for some of the things that we are going to need to do here in this, for our physical plant here. Uh, I ask that you continue to pray for my daughter, Rachel. They found another tumor and one of them is, the one that she had is growing, so they've had to increase her chemo. So please keep her in your, um, in your prayers. Any other announcements, Betty? Yeah, if anybody has any money left, <laughs> there uh, is an envelope in the closet. And uh, if you want to put some money in there for a gift card for the Thanksgiving family, if you feel like you don't want to buy any presents, oh, um, okay. you can put some money in there. Okay, for, for a gift card. For on the bikes, TV. <laughs> <laughs> also, we've got that tilapia in the freezer. And the big um, bag was open. So, you know, Alexander and I were talking, it's really, you can't really donate it to the family. So, but there are little packs in there. I think maybe we ought to get rid of that. That's from the fish fry. So if anybody would like to take some tilapia home. You can be sure that I won't take any home. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, I wrote myself notes here. Blankets clean and in good condition. Also, uh, children's winter boots, men's and boys' fall and winter clothes, clean and in good use bath and hand towels. Uh, and, that's, uh, and, and on the board, they, they, they're open uh, from 9 to 11.45 a.m. Tuesdays and Wednesdays. But Bill Packer, he checks that box we have for CCEA off okay. and on, and he takes things there. So if you want to bring anything in and put it in the CCEA box, that's okay. it. We'll get there. Thank you. You are. Those are the announcements that are before us this morning. Uh, before the, the sermon hymn, let us pray for our church growth. So the Lord be with you. And with us. Let us pray. Almighty God, look mercifully upon the world which thou hast redeemed by the blood of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ. We ask that by thy Holy Spirit you fill this branch of Christ's church, St. Peter's, to overflowing with those who love you and who love to worship and serve our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And it is his name that we pray. Amen. Our sermon hymn is low, he comes with clouds descending him at number five.
Let us pray. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our only strength and our only Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Last week we began a short study during the season of Advent on the four names of Jesus from Isaiah 9, chapter 6. Now, as I pointed out last week, someone has counted 256 names of Jesus in the Bible. And whether or not that is true is irrelevant, but what is important is that some of the most descriptive names for our Savior are in the very verse that we are looking at from Isaiah 9, verse 6, where we read, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And here we see four distinct names of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I said, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah has many prophecies concerning the coming Messiah, written nearly 800 years before the birth of Christ. We must remember that it was a time of great turmoil for the Jews. God's judgment was upon them because of their disobedience and their failure to be faithful to him. And God used the Assyrians to judge Israel, and they were now exiled to Babylon. And as a result, the people were in a very sorry state. As we read in Isaiah chapter 9, the beginning of this ninth chapter, Nevertheless, the gloom will, will not be upon her who is distressed, as when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun, and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them a light has shined. Notice the words again that Isaiah uses, gloom, they are distressed, oppressed, they walk in darkness. They dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Now, it was during this affliction of Israel that Isaiah prophesied, and his was a ministry of hope and encouragement. And as I said, hope and encouragement in the terms of the coming Messiah. And so last week we looked at the first name that he uses for our Savior, Wonderful Counselor, where I said that most scholars believe that it's one term, not two different terms, and it was about the Messiah that was to be born. But I said wonderful was a word that is usually applied to something that could only be done by an act of God. It was something that was so unusual that it would have been beyond human capabilities, something that is against nature and the natural order of things. In other words, there could be no earthly explanation for what happened. It is something that boggles the mind, if you will, something like raising Lazarus from the dead or feeding the multitude with a couple of loaves of bread and some, some small fish or giving sight to the man born blind. And connected with this word, wonderful was the counselor, the one who gives wise advice to his people, the one who speaks on our behalf. So what we have is this counselor, the one who represents us before God. As we stand before the judgment seat of God, if we have trusted in Christ as Savior and Lord, he is there saying that we belong to him, that he died in our place for our sins. And so putting this name of Jesus together, wonderful counselor, we have this out of this world, wonderful advocate, this mind-boggling counselor, if you will, that represents us before God. And that brings us to the second term or title that we see this, that Isaiah uses to describe Jesus, that he will be the mighty God. Now remember that Isaiah is talking about a baby, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And yet we see that one of the names of this baby will be mighty God. God. And so what we have here is a clear and decisive statement 
as to the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Quite simply, Jesus is God in the flesh. We know that one of the distinctives of Christianity is that it is the only faith that has a savior. None of the other religions or belief system has the equivalent of the person and work of Jesus Christ. And this is what separates us from every other faith or religion that is out there. As you've heard me say before, all the other religions in the world usually have one thing in common. They go from man to God or their concept of a God. They say that one must do X, Y, and Z in order to gain access to their God or their gods or to do the tree out in the yard. However, Christianity goes from God to man, with God essentially saying, I have done it all. I have sent my son, Jesus, to be born as a baby, to live a sinless life, and then to die on the cross and rise from the dead for the sins of those who believe in him as Savior and Lord. And this baby that was to be born would be, among other things, the mighty God. And again, as I said, this description clearly tells us of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that one of the distinctives of this baby is that he would be the second person of the Trinity, God in the flesh. And here we have the other unique thing about Christianity, because only Christianity has the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One God, but three persons. And as I've said before, the Trinity is absolutely essential and foundational to Christianity. Without the tr Trinity, there is simply no Christianity. Without the Trinity, we might as well stay in bed on Sunday morning, get up and watch the news shows and read the newspaper, if you still do that, and then get ready for football on Sunday afternoon. Unitarians don't believe in the Trinity. Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe in the Trinity. Muslims do not believe in the Trinity. Mormons do not believe in the Trinity. In the past, we I've heard some comments about the TV show, The Chosen. Now, I will be honest, I have not seen any of the episodes, so I don't have any firsthand knowledge to their faithfulness to the scriptures. Some have said that they are very good and faithful to the scriptures. But the main producers of The Chosen are, as they themselves have called themselves, proud members of the Latter-day Saints Church. They are Mormons. That's not true. That's not true. That is not true. That's what I read. No, it's not. There was a rumor that was started a few weeks ago because of one line in one episode, um, but it really spiraled out of control. They're very evangelical Christians. They are not Mormons. Interesting, because what I what I read and I looked at a couple of things, and there there was a number of different things. So we do we trust everything that we read? I don't know. Well, anyway, regardless of that. Keep an eye out for it, but as I said, Mormons in general, they do not believe in the Trinity, and the Trinity is essential to our faith. <laughs> now, in a nutshell, as you've heard me say before, God not only demanded a sacrifice for sin be made, but he also provided that sacrifice in the person and work of Jesus Christ, in the person and work of the second person of the Trinity, Again, God in the flesh. So, how do we know that Jesus is God? Well, in the very next chapter of Isaiah, he uses the same terms to describe God. In Isaiah 10, verse 20 and 21, we read, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, and such as have escaped of the house of Jacob, will never again depend on him who defeated them, but will depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. And then in the prophet Jeremiah, which is the next book in our Bible, uh, in describing Almighty God, uh, Jeremiah says, You show loving kindness to thousands, and repay the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God whose name is the Lord of hosts. 
So we see that the same terms, the same words are used to describe both God the Father and God the Son. And so common sense would indicate that they are indeed one. Now, not that that isn't enough proof, but what other proof do we have? Well, we start with the announcement to Joseph when he was told that the child that Mary was carrying was to be the son of God. And so we read in Matthew chapter 1, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew then says that this is the fulfillment of Isaiah 7, verse 14, which says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And so Matthew says in Matthew chapter 1, so all this was filled that it might be full, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel meaning God with us. And we also have the words of our Savior in John 10, where Jesus said, I and my Father are one. So it can't be any more clear than this. And even the Jewish religious leaders of the day understood completely that Jesus was saying that he was God. In John chapter 10 we read, Then, then, they, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of these do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself God. And then in John 12 we read, Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me sees him who sent me. In other words, those who saw Jesus saw the Father. And this is exactly what Jesus says in John 14, verse 9. Have I when he says, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Now I could quote more verses that point to the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Excuse me. But one that clearly stands out is the Apostle Paul's description of Jesus in Colossians chapter 1, where Paul says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Now, we often attribute, and rightly so, creation to the work of God. After all, Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And yet here in Colossians 1, we have the Apostle Paul tell us that Jesus was also active in the work of creation. But not only this, but we read, He is the image of the invisible God, and He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. So if you want to refute the beliefs of the Unitarians, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, the Muslims, all you have to do is point them to Colossians chapter 1 and the other verses from the Gospel of John. You know, I will say that you will never convince them, but that should not keep us from trying because we do not know who God has called. But the other very thing that we see is something that the Apostle John tells us in John chapter, in, the, in 1 John. And that is, 1 John tells us, through the Apostle John, that if you reject the Son, you have also rejected the Father. Because Jesus reveals God, and that is why rejecting Christ means also rejecting God. John says this in the first epistle. 
Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. You can't have one without the other. And this goes along with John's introduction to the gospel that bears his name, where we read, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared it. So we see in this name of Jesus exactly who he is. He is God in the flesh, who came to earth for us to be born as a baby, to live a sinless life, to die and rise from the dead for us and for our salvation. And so, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you for your word, and thank you for what it tells us about your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he indeed is the mighty God, the one who came to earth for us and for our salvation. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. As is our custom, now let us give unto God his tithes and our offerings. fellow Christians of other branches of Christ Church and all who love our divine Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in sincerity and are baptized 
are affectionately invited to the Lord's table. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church humility. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostles hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray especially for Diana and John, Diane, John, Lana, the family of Jose Aguilar, Luisa, Pat, friends of Fred Noss, Rachel, Jesse, Neil, Nick, Blaine family, the Dubray family, Brian and Peg, Reverend Russ Buchanan, the Jenkins and Gillen families, and all those the congregation would remember my name. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Devoutly saying, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy have promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and at all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen.
this in remembrance of Christ's blood was shed for me. Allow the Lord Jesus Christ himself to let you go. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all partakers of the Holy Communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not wearing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have newly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness toward us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Glory in Excelsis on page 103. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always amen, amen. processional hymn is hymn number 485 the word of God in the morning <laughs> Praise. 
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.